time to splash some water on that computer. Let's talk multiphase modeling. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and welcome to Practical CFD Modeling, the Volume of Fluid Method. This is what we use when we are trying to combine water and air in our CFD simulations, although we can also use it for water and oil, water and paint, or any situation where we have multiple types of fluids that we are trying to combine together. It doesn't have to be just two fluids, you can put as many together as you want. The volume of fluid method is extremely powerful, it is advanced modeling, and it gives you a lot of tools, plus a lot of headaches. So let's get into it. How does the volume of fluid method work? For every single cell in our domain, we assign it a volume fraction. This is a new variable, and what that volume fraction represents is how much of that cell is a portion of each fluid. So if that volume fraction equals zero, then that cell is completely water. If that volume fraction equals one, the cell is completely air. And if it's somewhere in between, it's a combination of the two. We use that volume fraction then to determine what the physical properties of the fluid in that cell are, combining the physical properties of those two fluids. If you have more than two fluids in your domain, you will have multiple volume fractions that you're tracking. As I said, this is a new variable that we introduce. Variables mean new transport equations and new boundary conditions. Well, how do you set the volume, volume fraction at the boundary? Well, you're going to have to actually vary it with its vertical position, most likely. Think about this for the case of, say, a ship floating in water. You have to actually tell the simulation where the water stops and where the air begins. So think about that. You're going to have to program it in with some sort of step change with vertical height. That's part of the boundary conditions. And you have to do that for all of your boundaries. You have to also be able to tell it that, say, for example, that the top actually does ha consist of just air. You also have to do this on your ship as well. You have to tell it that somewhere along the middle of the ship, water stops, air begins. Another thing, when you're also doing this with these multiple fluids, you have to consider hydrostatic pressure. This adds into the simulation now. How hydrostatic pressure factors in, that varies depending on your simulation. Uh, some softwares will actually factor out hydrostatic pressure and you'll have to add it back in after the fact. Other software packages will actually include hydrostatic pressure as part of the combination altogether. And so you will have to include that as part of your boundary conditions when you're specifying your pressure boundary condition. So check your help files and see how they handle that. But remember that that is part of your boundary conditions now. And when you're remembering hydrostatic pressure, check which direction gravity is pointing. I know it sounds ridiculous, but remember, it's a computer. It doesn't care. Gravity is just whichever way you point it. Now, some, some specifics on volume of fluid modeling that apply specifically to ship free surface situations, the maritime world, where I have most of my experience. It introduces a lot of instability into the CFD system. This is a loose coupling that interacts with the momentum equations and the continuity equations in every single cell in the domain. Expect all of your residuals are going to be a fair amount higher in your residual plots. That's okay, that's actually quite normal. Depend quite a bit more on your monitor values as a result. The monitor values will be the more reliable element to judge convergence. When it also comes to resolving the free surface, the volume of fluid method has a tendency to smear the transition between fluids. You're not going to get a crisp transition from water to air real quick. It's going to mean more of a blended shift. To try and compress that into a quick change, you need to put a lot of cells at that transition between the phases. Somewhere between 6 to 12 cells at that vertical transition zone. And they have to be compressed into a very short distance. Your average cell size in that section should be about 0.1 meters, and you're going to want to use a specialized interpolation scheme just for your volume fraction. Your software package should have a specialized scheme just for that. And you might even need to go down to first order interpolation for your volume fraction equation. That's a stability problem. As always, I would say going to first order interpolation is not the preferred approach. 
preferred approach is always to stick with second order interpolation for all of your equations. Speaking practically, I say that a simulation with first order volume fraction is better than no simulation at all. Then there are a few more tips for post-processing your simulation. Everybody wants to see that nice, crisp, free surface showing the waves coming off of your ship or whatever your object is. Well, remember how I said the volume fraction smears it out? So what do you actually pick to create that free surface? You're going to create an isosurface where you're setting your parameter to pick it off of the volume fraction of 0.5. It's just the convention of wherever the medium point is between water and air. However, as an internal quality check, you should also be checking to see how much of a smear you have between water and air. How large of a distance did it smear across? That's the, the fog zone is what it should be. And to do that, you'll be creating a volume based upon criteria. This is a post-processing thing that you can do in most software packages. The volume criteria that you should be doing is have that volume based upon any area where the volume fraction is between 0.05 and 0.95. That should be a relatively small region. If it's this large fog that's including your entire body, then you've got a problem. You need to refine your mesh quite a bit more. You want to get that fog area compressed to a relatively small region. That is the quick summary and introduction for practical tips on volume of fluid modeling. Quick recap then. Meshing, you need to create a crisp free surface, put a lot of cells right there at the free surface, six to 12 cells. Stability, expect higher residuals, expect stability problems, and depend on your monitors when you're judging convergence. Your residuals are going to be less reliable in this case. Post-processing, you really want to check the smear of that free surface. Check to have, check whether you have a fog over the whole of your body versus just a small region. And really, patience when dealing with volume of fluid. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and a lot of stability problems that you can run into. So best of luck and have fun. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.